This is all the side Easter eggs in Black Ops 6 Zombies, from free ray guns to free drops, and turning into a superhero, or helping a pirate on a quest. And because there's so many maps in Black Ops 6 Zombies, we're going to be alternating between maps as we go through the video. So drop a like to get us started here, and we'll begin. Our first Easter egg is on Liberty Falls, and it's got two different ways you can complete it. The first way is with a chopper gunner, and you need to come to this little slope up from Speed Cola towards the church. And just on the left-hand side here, you'll see a barrel nestled amongst the grass. What I'd recommend doing is pinging it so that you know exactly where it is in your game, and then going into your chopper gunner and shoot at where you just pinged, and you should be able to destroy the barrel. And then when you leave the chopper gunner, you'll find that there is a shovel on the floor that you can pick up. The alternative way to do this was found by Kenshin, I believe, and that's to just throw a nade from this exact spot, and that will also also dislodge the shovel and you'll be able to pick it up, but chopper gunner's the most reliable method. Then go to the graveyard and start digging and you'll get yourself a bunch of free loot. Our next easter egg is on a terminus and it involves you scoring a three-pointer. So come where I'm standing in the gameplay here and there are a few ways to do this depending on what weapon you have. I'm going to do it with this gun just because it's my preference I guess, but you can do it with other weapons as well. And you basically are going to be shooting a basketball which is lodged on the roof. Now if you're using an explosive weapon, obviously splash damage is going to work in your favor here, but you do need to be careful because there is a chance that you shoot this wrong and the basketball misses the hoop, which is on the other side of the building. However, if you do it successfully, you'll shoot, the basketball will go in the net, and you'll get a bunch of points. Next is a Liberty Falls Disco Boogie Down Easter Egg, except there's actually a lot more to it than that. So come to the viewfinder in the spawn area and look for the zombie dancing on a rock. Then go across to the other viewfinder on the other side of the bench and aim that one at the zombie as well. If you do this on separate rounds, you're basically going to have nothing happen and you're going to need to go back and activate one one more time. But if they're both lined up on the zombie, it will start a party and all the zombies around you will start dancing as well and the manglers will even join in. However, a warning for this is that abominations can't dance and so they're just going to keep attacking you. So keep that in mind. Don't let your guard down. Next, we're going to be cooking a fish on Terminus. So you need to go to the docks area to find a fish and you'll need to use an explosive to kill the fish for you to be able to then grab it. And then you're going to need to go around the map and collect several ingredients. But the ingredients that you want to grab will change depending on what the outcome you want from this Easter egg is. So we'll need oil regardless to cook our fish. So you can find that in the mess hall on this shelf here. But then if you're in a napalm bursty kind of mood, then you'll also want to grab the can of chili that can also be found in the mess hall. If you're feeling a little bit more of a cryo-freeze situation, then you can grab this ball of salt, or is it a snowball? I'm not really sure, on top of the fridge in the living quarters where Jug is. Next, there's a brain, if you're feeling kind of brain rotty, and that's in the bio lab on a medical table. Then if you're in a kind of shadow rifty mood, you can grab this plant in a grassy patch outside the storage area, just down from where Quick Revive is. And finally, if you like Deadwire, then you'll need a battery and you can find that inside the engineering area near the crafting bench. When you've selected your ingredient of choice or you can grab them all, go to the frying pan in the mess hall and place your ingredients into the pan by holding square. This will then start an animation where the fish starts cooking and depending on what ingredients you've put in the pan, you'll get a different outcome. So if you've put all the ingredients in the pan, you'll get like a rainbow fire type effect, whereas if you put fewer ingredients in, you'll get a different animation. And if you then progress a round and then interact with the frying pan again, you'll then eat whatever kind of culinary delight you've concocted and you'll get an achievement. And if you don't cook all the ingredients, but you just cooked the one relative to the alternate ammo type that you prefer, then that AAT will get a boost for a limited time after eating the fish. Next on Liberty Falls, to get yourself a free perk, I recommend buying a sniper, although it can be done with other weapons if you're pinpoint accurate, and then heading into the back of the church graveyard. Back there, you'll find this opening area. It's kind of a little path off into the distance. And on a fence, you'll see that there are a series of cans. If you zoom in and start shooting the cans and you miss a shot, all of the cans are going to disappear and you're going to need to go another round to get this to come back. But if you don't miss any shots and you have 100% accuracy, you'll knock all the cans off the fence and you'll be granted a free dead shot. Next on Terminus, this is a perfect Easter egg for scaring your friends. So the first thing to do is identify which one of your your friends you're going to try and spook and then bring your chosen victim to the spawn area 
area of the map where you can get into the elevator and then tell your friend to go into the elevator and as soon as they buy the elevator, tell them to start jumping up and down. What this is going to do is it's going to trigger an alternate version of the elevator sequence, which is much more gory than the normal elevator experience. Next is a Liberty Falls Easter egg that is actually one of my favorites because it's so easy to do, but the rewards are so plentiful. So come to the church and you'll need an explosive of some kind for this. So that could be a Semtex, a Frag, or even a Concussion Grenade, or you can use a weapon for it like a Pack-a-Punched Sally. Whatever you choose to use, you just need to blow up this zombie head attached to a spike on top of the church. If you do it successfully, the head will disappear and zombies will then start falling from the sky and all of them will drop a reward. So some of them will drop you, for example, an ether wrench, which will upgrade your weapon rarity. Others will just drop 100 points. Others might drop things like a chopper gunner or another support streak. And so wait for all the zombies to stop raining from above and then grab all those juicy goodies. Next, have you ever been swimming around Terminus? Maybe you're going diving and you feel like your lungs just can't hack what you're trying to do. Like you're running out of breath way too fast and you're drowning underwater. Well, if that's you, this next Easter egg is very quick and it completely removes that problem. So to do it, come to the Pack-a-Punch area of the map and dive into the water and then swim where I'm swimming and you'll find this rock. You need to explode the rock with something. It could be a Semtex or something similar. And once you do that, it's going to dislodge a small oxygen canister. And when you hold square on the canister, you'll pick it up. And that will then pretty much double the amount of breathing time you have underwater and mean that you can explore the seafloor a lot more easily. And with easier seafloor exploration comes access to another Easter egg on Terminus. Now, technically, you can do this next one without the oxygen tank, but it just makes your life a little bit easier because we're going to be searching around for stuff a little bit here. So the way it works is, as you might have seen in the map already so far, there are underwater chests in various locations with a glowing light on them. And if you go over to them and hold square, they'll pop open and you can get rewards like an ether tool, which will upgrade your weapon rarity, or an ether crystal, which will give you a free pack a punch level. But what you might not have known is the following two things. Number one, their locations change each game. So they're usually clustered around the different islands on the map, and they can also spawn in the bio lab which you might not have noticed. But number two, if you open every single one of your underwater crates in a single game, you actually get a free perk alongside all the other rewards that you already get from opening the chests. So this is a really cool little free perk Easter egg for those of you that want to do some swimming around and looking for those chests. Our next Easter egg is on Terminus, and this is one of my favorite ones on the map, probably. And the first thing that we're going to need for this is Melee Macchiato. So go and buy that in the bio lab, and then do a 180 and come through to the Speed Cola Tunnel. As you're going up the tunnel, on the right-hand side, you'll find this window. And if you look between the rocks, you'll see that there's a map in there with a red X marks the spot on it. Wherever that red cross is, you need to go there. So take a boat out to your target location and swim down into the water, and you should be able to find a watch which you can pick up. You then need to return to that window we were just looking in and melee it with Melee Macchiato. And then inside, you'll have a skeleton who you can talk to by holding square. He'll take the watch from you and he'll indicate on the map that you need to go to these three locations. And I'm pretty sure these are the same every game, so I'm just going to show you where they are now. Before you go, though, you need to get yourself Molotovs or Thermite Grenades, because that's going to be used for this step. So first, we're going to go to the shipwreck. And on the deck of the shipwreck, we're going to throw one of our Molotovs at the base of the mast. You can see there's some bones just resting against there as well. So we're going to incinerate the base of the mast with the Molotov, and that's going to spawn in an HVT, which we then have to take down. And it's pretty chunky, so bring some firepower. When you kill it, it's going to drop a coin, and you need to pick that up, and it's going to be one of three cursed coins that we need. Next, head to Castle Rock Island, and you need to run around the island until you find this little lantern. And once again, just in front of that lantern, you'll see a couple of bones poking out of the sand. You need to throw your Molotov down at them, and this will cause another HVT to spawn spawn in, which you need to kill and grab the coin from. Then we're going to head to Temple Island and we're going to be looking for some bones once more. These bones are a little easier to spot, thankfully. They're just on a kind of tarpaulin looking thing on these stairs. Molotov them, take your HVT down and grab your third coin. You then need to head back to the pirate skeleton from the Speed Cola Cave. And if you interact with him, he'll take the coins from you and he'll say, if you want to continue with this quest, there's one more thing you could do. And alongside that little riddle, he also 
also gives you some gold weapons, which is extremely generous of him, seeing as we haven't even finished his side quest yet, but thanks, Skelly. And so the next thing that we can do here is wait three rounds and then go to Crab Island. On Crab Island, you're going to be looking for this chest, and the island itself is going to be slightly different this round compared to the other previous rounds because it's going to be sort of stormy above, and that's why it relates to the captain's riddle. And so while it's storming on that round, look for that chest, hold square, open it, and inside you'll find a talisman. Now, if you equip this talisman, it changes your game completely because now you're going to lose points if you get hit by zombies, but every kill that you get is going to have a permanent double points applied. And the cool thing about this is that this is kind of an Easter egg in an Easter egg here, but you can actually get a Dark Ops challenge completed for earning 20,000 points in one go without taking a hit while you're holding this talisman. Next on Liberty Falls, we've all been there in real life, right? Where you go to a vending machine and you try and buy yourself a drink or something and it gets stuck and it's the most annoying thing in the world. But thankfully, we can right those wrongs in Liberty Falls with the free vending machine Easter egg because this thing gives you so much loot. But there's been a bit of confusion about how to do this on the internet, and I talked about this in my most recent Zombies Tips and Tricks video, but there's been even more discoveries associated with it since then. So, the most consistent way to do this is to not have melee macchiato. If you've bought melee, then it's going to destroy the machine when you hit it, and you're just going to be out of luck. But if you don't have melee macchiato, come over to the machine, crouch, and punch the dispenser part of the machine. And it's going to give you a ton of rewards. You can get a gold ray gun from this. You can get a regular ray gun. You can get an Ethereum crystal, you can even get perks. It's so generous and it will give you rewards every single round if you just keep on punching that dispenser. Next on Terminus is the music Easter egg. For this, you've just got to find three interactable objects and I'm going to show you the locations for those three now and then a song will play, which is basically Evanescence. It sounds sick. So the first of them is just here. The second that you need to interact with, if you come through here, you can find it just here. And the third interactable object, and bear in mind, as soon as you pick this one up, the song will start playing, is just here. And you won't hear the song, obviously, if you've got your music volume turned down, so keep that in mind. Next on Liberty Falls, there are three pairs of headphones around the map. One pair of headphones is inside the church on this bench, and you can hold square on it to activate it. The next is just up the stairs from Ollie's Comics. So if you're a speed cola and you walk towards those stairs, you can find the headphones just underneath this bench. And the third set is in the alleyway near the vending machine. So you can see the vending machine there in the distance. That's just next to spawn. And it's in the corner here by this railing opposite the crafting bench. Hold square on all three and the music Easter egg will play. Next up, did you know that you can actually go speedboat racing in Terminus? This almost feels like this game's version of Dead Ops Arcade. It's really goofy, but honestly really cool for just a side quest. And the way it works is you need to go over to the eastmost island on the map. So as far east as you can possibly go and then come to where I am in the gameplay here. Swim down into the water and on the ocean floor, you'll find a pink speedboat. And if you hold square on it, it will put you into your speedboat race. But if you're in co-op, it will give you an option to choose whether you want to go into the race or if you want to decline. There'll be a vote. And then when it starts, there's a bunch of points that you can grab. And there's even a surprise appearance from Patient 13, the sea monster, as well. Next, this is how you get the Beam Smasher for free on Terminus. The first thing to do is activate the power around the map with the three purple amp generators. This is very self-explanatory. It's just activating Pack-A-Punch. Then... Come down to below where Quick Revive is here and activate this little laptop. You're going to need to do this with two other laptops as well. There's one just below where Stamina Up is, so just go ahead and activate that now. And the third can be found just by the Docks area on a little outcrop here. Hold square, you'll activate that. When Pack-a-Punch is done, you then need to come over to one of these Arsenal machines and use it to purchase Deadwire using Salvage. You need to put that on one of your weapons. Next, you need to come to the Pack-a-Punch Incline Lift and activate it. You're going to want it to travel from below up to the top level of the map, and as it does so, you're going to be able to see a window just here. On the right-hand side, there is an electric box that you need to shoot with your dead wire weapon, and when you do so, it will start sparking. You'll then be able to shoot several other electrical boxes, which I'm going to show you the locations for now, and each time, the spark will move and travel to the next box. The next one is just here, as you can see. The final electrical box is just on the side of the wall here, and that will open up this room. Once you enter the laboratory, kill this little trapped zombie that's just here lying down on the floor. 
and then pick up the fob, as you can see I'm doing here. You'll get a quote when you do so, and it will be the leftmost item in your quest items when you bring up your scoreboard. Then leave and go to the C Tower. In the C Tower, you'll find a briefcase on a table, hold square on it, and it will pop open. It'll, you'll be able to grab a little multiphasic injector, then bring the multiphasic injector back to the laboratory, and you'll be able to place it into this machine. Next, we're going to run up to Peck, and we're actually going to spend 5,000 points for him to just give us the answer to this puzzle. So pay your points. And then on the left side of the screen, you'll see there are three numbers that you need to remember and bring back to the lab. Enter the numbers into these dials here. And once you submit them, the machine is going to say it is targeting. And you simply need to go to the next round and then the targeting will be complete. The screen will show you a location that you need to travel to and it will be one of the islands on the map. And then head over to that island. When you get there, you should see a blue ball just hanging out waiting for you. Place the multiphasic injector down on it. And then you need to just survive while a whole load of zombies spawn in. While they're spawning, you'll see one zombie that's glowing blue, the same color as the orb. And you need to try and kill that zombie over the multiphasic injector. If you fail, it's okay. You can just run over to the essence blob thing that it will drop and you can pick it up and bring it to the glowing ball yourself. But if you kill the zombie near enough to it, it will just automatically activate. So that's the easiest thing to do. Once you've killed one of the glowing zombies over the glowing ball, you'll then have another zombie spawn in with the glow once again. And you just need to do the same thing a couple of times. Times, and once it's done, the glow will move, but the multiphasic injector still remains. You need to pick up multiphasic injector and take it to the next island that the ball has moved to. You then just repeat this a couple times. So go to the next island. It'll be green ball now. Place the multiphasic injector. Kill a green glowing zombie over the green ball. Do that a couple times. And then the ball will move. And for your third island, rinse and repeat. And once you've killed the last glowing zombie over the glowing ball, you'll then be able to pick up a infused multiphasic injector, which will be red in your quest items when you pull up your scoreboard. Then simply run back to the laboratory and hold square on this machine in order to craft yourself a free beam smasher. So now you have a free beam smasher and you've also become an honorary member of the cult of the multiphasic injector. Next, this one's really useful if you find yourself on Temple Island because it's a bit far away from everything else. It's that top left corner of the map. If you bring the Beam Smasher to that island and use the alt fire of the Beam Smasher on this symbol, which is a sentinel artifact from the zombie storyline, if you do it for long enough, it will glow white and it will then teleport you back to the mainland. Next on Liberty Falls, here's how to get every single power up in the game for free. Number one, you can get a free double points by looking at the water tower and whether or not you have a scope, this is going to be a bit fiddly, but shooting the little double points on there and that will give you your double points. You can get a bonus points by following the main road past the bus and going to the comic shop. And then around the back of that, you can shoot this little thing on the top left corner of the air conditioner and that gives you bonus points. For a free fire sale and a bunch of free salvage, bring three Semtex to this red pool and then throw all three of them on a vermin round and some loot will come out. That's the salvage that you're going to get from this. And now you just need to do that twice more on the subsequent vermin rounds and you'll be awarded a fire sale. Next, to get a full power, go to the front side of Liberty Lanes and look for the debris behind this bus. And then you should be able to shoot the swords there and get yourself the full power. For a free insta-kill, travel to the graveyard area and run to the back fence and then look up on the church here and you can get yourself your free insta. For a free max ammo, go to the roof of spawn, turn around and aim towards the bottom of the bridge's right arch and and you can shoot the max ammo there. And then for max armor, to the left of the gobblegum machine on Washington Ave, look through this window and shoot the chest armor that's sitting on the cart. And finally, for a free nuke, you can blow up the chandelier up here, or you can zipline over to the bank rooftop and you'll then be able to shoot the nuke through the glass in the chandelier. So that's all of them on Liberty Falls. Now let's flip over to Terminus. You can get a free max ammo if you cook a grenade, like you can see here, and throw it into this little hut and if you do so correctly, the max ammo will spawn right next to you. And there's another freebie that you can get from going to the bio lab and heading into the mystery box location in there. And on the left, you'll see all of these document boxes. Shoot those out of the way and you'll see behind there's actually a little double points sitting on the desk. And if you shoot it, it will give you double points. There's also a nuke one of these. So if you come to Crab Island and you look into this little zombie spawn location, you can see a metal nuke just sitting on the side. And if you shoot that, 
you'll get yourself a nuke. Next, we're going to get a free bonus points. This one can be done on the sunken ship. So come onto the ship and you're going to be shooting into this window, just as I'm doing in the gameplay here. And when you do that and you successfully hit your target, you'll get yourself a free bonus points. Next, for a free insta-kill, come to the top left island on the map. That's the Temple Island. And you're going to be looking for this kind of tomb entrance. And up the top there, you can see that there is an insta-kill just perched. Shoot it and you'll get yourself a free insta-kill. Next, this is full armor. You're going to go into the quick revive room and look in the window where you can also see the clock for the Easter egg. And if you look in the shadows there and shoot, you'll get yourself a free full armor. And next, we've got the full power power-up. So for this, I recommend coming onto this walkway here and aiming where I'm aiming in the game. And this one's really hard to see, but shoot exactly where I shoot and you'll get yourself a free full power. So at this point in the list on these Terminus power-ups, you might be wondering where the Terminus fire sale is. And we'll come back to that at the end. Our next Easter egg is on Liberty Falls. If you go to the spawn area of the map, you'll be able to find this pair of bowling alley shoes sitting just here. And if you you shoot them, a little sound will play and they will disappear. We're now going to look for another couple of pairs of shoes. And the first one is in this window opposite Liberty Lanes. And you need to shoot the shoes that are sitting on the coffin. Then there's another pair in the back of the church cemetery. And these ones are hanging on a tree. And so long as you go to the very back of the cemetery, you'll find this pretty easily. The next pair is to the left of the radio house, which you use to build the jet gun. And we're going to be looking for Frank's hardware just next to the arsenal machine. The shoes themselves will be on a shelf inside. Frank's hardware. And if you can't find this, by the way, it's opposite the entrance to Ollie's comics near the spawn area. And there's a final pair of shoes just here. This is in the run up to the church from Speed Cola. And it's on the right hand side. And you need to look underneath the little chair in there, I think it is. And that's where you'll find your shoes. And for the record, you can shoot them in any order. Once you've shot your fifth pair of shoes, you're going to be teleported into a bowling Easter egg. It's going to allow you to play bowling. And at first, I didn't really understand how it worked because I was going for the pins in the back of the bowling alley. But you're actually meant to be going for the zombies. So charge up your bowling ball, get as many zombie kills as you can, and at the end of it, you'll get a free perk as a reward. But what a lot of people don't know is that once you finish bowling and you pick up your reward, you'll start being teleported back to reality. Oh, there will go gravity, and then you'll spawn back in, but you'll be able to reactivate bowling if you go over to this window inside the bowling alley and shoot into the toilet where another pair of shoes are located. And those extra shoes for you to reset the game will spawn in that toilet. I think it's three rounds after you first do bowling and then they'll come back three rounds later after you finish it. And so you can keep repeating it via those shoes once they spawn back in. And if you do bowling again by doing this, you can get gold guns as a reward as well. So there's a whole load of free rewards you can get just from bowling. Next, we've got some free snooker points that you can grab both on Terminus and on Liberty Falls. So on Terminus, come to the jug room and shoot the snooker balls on the snooker table to get a free 100 points. And on Liberty Falls, you just need to come to the bowling alley, that's Liberty Lanes, shoot your snooker balls and grab yourself your free hundo. Next, on Terminus, we have a free perk for you. If you come down to the bio lab, you can find zombies trapped in the jail cells behind the cooling towers along this wall here. If you take out all of those zombies and then you go to the next round, you're going to see that in in their place, there are now a bunch of newly spawned vermin. And so once again, we're going to take all of those vermin out and then we're going to finish the round as normal, go to the next round. And when you look in the jail cells, you'll see a mangler is now trapped in there. And so you're going to rinse and repeat, take that mangler down. And when you do so, as you can see, you'll get yourself a free perk. Our next Easter egg on Liberty Falls is going to summon Ring of Fire back into the game. Okay, well, not quite, but it is going to summon some useful help hellfire. So come to the church and bring a weapon with napalm burst. And I think you can also do this with molotovs. But if you've got the napalm burst ammo mod on your weapon, you'll be all set for this. And you're going to be looking for this set of candles. And you're going to need to shoot them until they start smoking a kind of purpley effect. Then you need to look for this next set of candles and do the exact same thing. And once you do that successfully with both sets, a big purple pool is going to appear on the floor. And it's going to be a trap that ticks down the health of zombies. And the amazing thing about this is that it's decent, like it's not dreadful, and you can do this every round and it's free. So if you need a little bit of extra wave clear, maybe you're out of ammo or you just want to chew through a round a little bit faster, 
this could be a really cool trick. And a pro tip for this would be that you could probably do it during the boss fight of the Liberty Falls Easter egg. And I've got that linked on screen and in the description down below right now if you want to take a crack at it. Our next Easter egg is on Terminus. If you guys remember Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, it was possible in that game to get a friendly hellhound that would revive you and would follow you around and generally help you out while you fought off all the zombies. And while that as a feature isn't returning directly in Black Ops 6, there is something similar in this next Easter egg. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around the map and search for several teddy bears and stuffed animals. They can be found in any order, but this is just the one I'm going to show you in my game. So the first one is going to be this unicorn, which is in this locker here, just next to the stamina machine. And when you find it, you just need to hold square on it and it will disappear and a little sound cue will play. The next one is a little monkey and this can be found just next to the walkway to the C tower. So stand on the corner of that walkway and you'll see the monkey sitting in the corner, hold square and you'll pick him up. The next one is a little bear and it's in the bio lab. So you're going to be looking for one of these medical stations and it'll just be down here, just resting on the floor down there. The next one is in the mining tunnels. So this isn't the speed cola side. This is the PhD side and it's a blue stuffy of an elephant. So just hold square once again. Then we've got a duck and this one fittingly is on the large ship, which we're actually going to be coming back to for another side quest later. But the duck sadly is in the dumpster. So hold square to get him out of there. The next one is a giraffe and this one's on Crab Island and it's just behind this floodlight sitting in the shadows there. So hold square and you'll pick that up. And then when you've done that, that's all the stuffies. So you can now go to the jug room where the jug perk is or the second amp generator is and you'll see all the stuffies sitting on the bunk beds. You've now just got to go and hold square on them and each of them will drop a piece of equipment and they'll all start flying into the air. Then in the middle of the room, they'll combine and turn into a mega stuffy. That is literally its in-game name. It's a stuffy kind of Optimus Prime looking Exodia thing and it flies around and follows you and helps you in your game. And part of how it helps you is if you go down, it can revive you. So this is a crazy useful companion to have if you're trying to do an especially difficult side quest, for example. Next on Terminus, we're going to be shooting a UFO out of the sky, but there are a couple of steps we need to do in order to get set up for that. First, we're going to be putting dead wire on one of our guns. So go to the arsenal machine and spend some salvage to do that. And then come and stand roughly where I'm standing here. I just find that this is one of the most convenient places to do this. You basically need to look at this little antenna that you can see in the distance on a radio tower. And you'll see that it's got a little blue light on it as well. Shoot the radio tower and a red light should appear right on top of it. And then you quickly need to swivel and look at another radio tower in the distance and shoot that antenna as well. If you do it successfully, both towers will stay lit up red at the top. But if you do this too slowly, they'll just go back to being unlit and you'll need to try it again. Once you've got them both staying red though, you can then do the next step of the quest, which involves the deck cannon trap. So you first need to hoard up a lot of zombies because you need lots of zombies for this to work properly and then bring them out the front of the trap and turn it on. When you do so, you'll see the batteries on the side of the deck cannon actually charge up. They'll go from being minimally charged, like a small purple glow, all the way to being full batteries. And if you get them full like that, the deck cannon will actually target a UFO out of the sky and it will shoot it down and you'll see it streaking all the way across the sky and you can then follow it where it lands and get yourself a whole load of rewards. And you can get a free beam smasher or a free ray gun from this, just like I did in my game here. Next, have you seen these spores on the islands around Terminus? If you have, you might not have realized these are actually a side quest. So to get started, you just need to drive around one of the small islands here and shoot every single spore that you find in one round. Then once you've shot all of those spores, and it has to be every single one on that little mini island. You can then go to the next round and if you drive around in a boat, you'll see that more spores have spawned in but on a different island this time. And so as you can probably guess, you need to shoot every single spore and then you need to end the round. This will then happen one more time. So drive around in your boat, find the spores on the new island and then shoot every single one of them and then end the round. The final iteration of this, this sort of fourth time shooting spores is actually not on an external mini island, but it's on the main island 
island. So you need to come to the speed cola area and throughout those speed cola caves, you'll find more spores. And when you shoot every single one of them, you'll be given a free perk reward. Next on Liberty Falls, there's a way to get a free jet gun or a free ray gun or some other free goodies from cars that are littered around the map. So what you need to do is look for one of these cars. The spawn locations for them are here in this area by the groundskeeper's house, here next to Ollie's comics, and here just outside the church. You'll have those three cars in your game, but only one of the cars will contain a plushie of Mr. Peaks sitting on the back seat. So whichever one of your cars has Mr. Peaks in is your target car. You then need to either have a mangler shoot the car, or you can use a mangler cannon to shoot the car yourself. And when you blow it up, its boot will go gold and a free weapon will pop out of the back. And the cool thing about this Easter egg is there are two more cars on the map. So if you go five rounds later in your game, Mr. Peaks will spawn in to one of the two remaining cars. And so you can then mangler cannon the next car with Mr. Peaks in it, and you get yourself another chance at a free ray gun or a free jet gun. And the same happens five rounds later. But there are other ways to get free ray guns as well. So it's not just the vending machine. It's not just the Mr. Peaks car. You can also get free ray guns out of the crystals in the church, just like we could during Black Ops Cold War. And you can also get a free ray gun from the trials machine. So when trials spawn in, do a trial, get a legendary reward, and then this might happen. Oh, I got a ray gun out of the, out of the thing. Sick. And on top of all of those, another way to get the free ray gun is, like I said before, to do the Liberty Falls Easter egg main quest. And that's not only going to give you a free ray gun, it's also going to give you a ray gun skin. And look how gorgeous this thing looks. Next, on Terminus, we finally have a good reason for why Crab Island is called Crab Island. So, as you might expect, you need to come to Crab Island for this side quest and look around for this crab net. Then, when you find it, throw a Semtex at it. And if you do this successfully, you'll start being swarmed by crabs. And you'll have to melee them. And a timer will also appear in the middle of your screen. You're basically playing whack-a-mole now. And I don't really know why this is designed this way, because I thought the crabs should be coming to celebrate you getting rid of the crab net or something, but the fact that you start then just meleeing all of them is pretty brutal, but hey, that's the animal kingdom, I guess. And the nice thing about this is that once you're done whacking moles, you get rewarded with a free perk. Also, you can repeat this crab easter egg for more rewards in future rounds. Next on Liberty Falls, we're going to do some sucking with the jet gun. And so we're going to quickly run through how to get the jet gun for free through a side quest. Make your way into Washington Avenue and look for this. It's a little water valve that you can find outside the front of the flower store. Should be pretty easy for you to grab. Next, head to Liberty Lanes. That is the bowling alley. And in there, you're looking for this breaker. And with the breaker, you basically need to destroy it. So I think you can shoot it. You can melee it. You can do anything just to break it open, and then you can place the water valve inside. When you do that, it's going to start continuously spawning zombies in, so I recommend bringing a decoy or an ether shroud or a smoke grenade and holding square on the valve and getting progress on the meter on the left-hand side. You might need to jump on the valve, do it for a little bit, and then jump off to kill some zombies, clear the area, and then jump back on, get a couple extra seconds, jump off, etc. But once you do this a couple of times, you'll get your meter to completion, and out will pop a part for you to pick up, and it will also kind of nuke the area as well, so any zombies that are in front of you when you finish the valve will be killed off. Next, we're going to need a Mangler Arm Cannon or a Mutant Injection. So if you've already got a Mutant Injection via one of the quests on the map, there's a variety of them, or you've got it from a special enemy, that's fine. You can use that here, but you can alternatively just go over to a crafting bench and spend salvage to craft yourself an armor cannon. Crafting benches can be found here and here, and once you've got yourself a mangler arm or a mutant injection, you need to shoot at this door to destroy the radio store on Riverside near the comic store. Inside there are piles of trash that you can hold square on to uncover salvage or even vermin as well, so be mindful not to get jump scared here. But as you root through the trash, you should eventually be able to find a trash pile containing electrical wires. Once you find them, pick them up. Then head to the cemetery area and you'll find a groundskeeper zombie roaming around there in a unique outfit. He should be wearing like a red shirt with dungarees and overalls. That's how you can distinguish him from the other zombies. Once you find him, kill him, and once he dies, he'll drop a key for a shed. So you just need to head over to the shed and follow where I'm going in the gameplay here in order to do that. And once you get there, you'll be able to find a handle break inside. Then head over to the second floor of the motel, 
and you can follow where I'm going in the gameplay here in order to get there. And once you arrive, a bunch of zombies will come crashing out of this motel room and you just need to take them out and then walk into that room. Inside, you'll find a jet gun on a crafting table that's sort of mid-assembly and this is your jet gun crafting bench. Now, before you build the jet gun, I want to give you a word of warning. This room is basically one way in, one way out. It's very narrow in there and it's a bit of a death trap. So while you're doing this next bit, just be mindful that you're going to have your back to the zombies and it's it's going to get sketchy if you've got a big horde following you. So it's a good idea to have a teammate hold a zombie for you if you can. You're going to run into the little room and hold square on the bench to craft the jet gun and boom, you've got it crafted. Now we can get back to sucking. So bring the jet gun to this little ledge and suck the little statue that you can see on this AC unit. And once you get it all the way into the jet gun, it will make a little sound and you can move on to the next statue. There are four of them located inside Ollie's comic shop. So there's one right in the entrance as you get in there and that's really really easy to find. A second can be found over here. And also while you're doing this, I'd honestly just recommend sucking the room because it's going to make it a lot easier to find the specific locations for these. There's my third one and my fourth is just across the room. Next, we need to find one in Liberty Lanes. It's going to be near the top of the sign on the word lanes. There's another one on the church, just resting on the window up there. There's another one on the motel sign. And it's not the big motel sign. It's the one to the side of that building. And there's another one if you come up to the roof of the bank and then buy the X marks the spot thing to drop down here. And you need to suck another AC unit to grab your final statue. Now, I'm not grabbing the statue in my game here straight away because I have a recommendation for all of you guys. This Easter egg's really cool. It's really, really awesome. But it's more fun with more zombies spawned in when you first get inside her. So wait for a bunch of zombies to be spawned and then suck that final statue in and you'll find yourself inside Etherella. You can now control her to laser blast all these zombies in front of you. And you can also still maneuver around by jumping and things like that as well. Now you may have noticed there's a missing Easter egg amongst everything that we've covered so far. We've got all these free power-ups on Terminus and on Liberty Falls, but on Terminus, you may have spotted that I didn't mention the free fire sale. And that's because I've got it linked on screen right now for you to click through to. And right next to it is the Liberty Falls main quest guide. And if you successfully follow my guide, you'll unlock this sick ray gun skin. So I really recommend clicking through and giving it a shot. I'll see you there. Good luck. Bye for now.